In honor of the NFL returning tonight, this week is brought to you by the Raiders being stupid enough to trade the Bears' Khalil Mack. Khalil motherfucking Khalil Mack. Mack. Let's go! The Bears, the Bears. Let's go! TV looking like Starvin' Marvin. Looking looking dungy esque. <laughs> looking like a total dunge. Oh, uh, I just saw the bottom ticker Tom Up Bears Packers on Sunday. Yo, can't wait. Yo, can't wait. Yo, can't wait. one of the things that they keep putting on the ticker for the Bears Packers is that uh, Allen Robinson is second in the league in uh, red zone touchdowns since 2015 behind only Antonio Brown. Whew. Bears going to win it all what this year, baby. What a stat. And for all of our Texan or Cowboy fans listening, because most people are from Texas to listen, Bears are going to win it all, baby. <laughs> Bears. Bears. Until like, until like 17 episodes from now when we're like, my God, I can't believe they only finished 3-13. and 13. <laughs> If that happens, the podcast will die because I will have killed myself. <laughs> I'll just replace you. Because you're very expendable, Kevin. I'll take it. Um, <laughs> anyway, hello, welcome to Hodge Podcast, the official podcast of countryhodgepodge.com. I'm your host, Steve Hodge, and joining me as always is my co-host, cousin lover, Kevin Hodge. Let's go! Let's go! Uh, we are watching the football on the TV right now, so we will probably get distracted and say the same thing the other person said because we aren't paying attention to what, what each other is saying. <laughs> what? <laughs> Exactly. Um, We don't have anything to rant about this week because I didn't do anything this week or pay attention to anything. Who's Catholic uh, tapping? What is up? I could rant uh, about the Cleo Mack trade some more because I'm sure everyone listening to this podcast is primarily (laughs) concerned with my take on that. (laughs) Yeah, obviously. But the one thing I will say... this guy? I don't know. Uh, It's panning. Is Is that Justice Beaver? No, this is that fucking guy I was telling you about. Sean oh. Mendez, where they keep showing him and the girls in the front row are like freaking out as if they're seeing the Beatles back in the day. Uh yeah, he's a semi attractive white kid, so yeah. Well if you sense. listen to the sound of the music, he must be a country singer. <laughs> <laughs> uh he must be a great country singer. God, those is he even wearing is that leggings or is that pants is there a difference Eh, not really at this point (laughs) in the skinny jean era is there even a difference yeah well he is pretending to play an acoustic guitar while on stage so he has to be a country singer exactly Um, he's got all of the the qualities white dude (laughs) white tea not country music sound yeah all the makings of a modern country star yeah that's true. Okay, he but need- the one thing I will say, and I'll try not to bring it up constantly for the rest of the season, uh, we are Bears fans. I know a lot of people who listen are not Bears fans. We are Bears fans. It has been a very rough time the last several <laughs> years. This is the it's first rough, season much since the end of 2010. This season. is the first season <laughs> to have like real legitimate excitement and hope for the direction of the team since like 2010, and uh, the Khalil Mack trade that just went down just catapults that into another stratosphere of excitement. So oh, I, 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 I will try my best not to derail this podcast with Bears talk, but no promises. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that's not what we're talking about this week. This week, we're talking about Josh Ward. Um, the Khalil who... Mack of country music. I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, he is... I, I when we were deciding on our list, I was like, I don't think I have that many songs saved by him. And then I went to my playlist, and I was like, Oh wait, no, I have like fourteen songs saved by him on these playlists. And then when I played those fourteen, I was like, I don't know which four to cut up from my top ten because they're all really freaking good. And then on top of that, he has more obviously good CDs. But those yeah, are, and, and that was the thing songs. when you when uh, when you were initially concerned about having enough saved, I was like, Yeah, but his last two albums that came out, you know, and they came out in the last couple of years. 
are really good, and I know that you listen to them in their entirety. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, well, so, you have to have at least a good chunk of those saved. Now he's got yeah. some old stuff that's really good. Yeah, it, we were able to, and it was funny, this is the closest we've ever had to like the same top ten, where we both have the same number one, and then we had nine of the ten same songs on the lists. So we only had one song difference between each other, and we're like, that's... Like the only time that's ever happened, because usually it's like, oh, I think we'll probably have the same ten. Then we have like three that are the same. Yeah, <laughs> often, but, often happens. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know too much actually about Josh Ward himself. I know he has a daughter who just went to college because he's posts about it on Instagram. But <laughs> yeah, no, I would say I know basically <laughs> I know. zero about him. Um, yeah. I got into him several years ago. Kind of around the same time, I mean, basically around the same time that I was just discovering this whole world of of red dirt and Texas country. Um, yeah, it was either "Sent Me You" or "Hard Whiskey" that I first heard. Yeah, and it I was, just that, fell in love with those. That songs. was the, that was same for me. "Sent Me You" was the first one I heard, and then "Hard Whiskey" immediately after. Um, and I just started diving into his stuff, and I and I liked it, but I still didn't like it like tremendously until the 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 second to most recent album that came out. And that one is when it like shot into the next level. I'm like, this dude is solid. I really like him. And then his album this year comes out and it's again, really fucking good. And I'm like, all right, this dude is great. I I listened to him a pretty decent amount because I have a playlist. That's just him. Uh, is he the last of the four horsemen that we have to do? Yes. So it's, it was Cody it's him, Jinx, Whitey yeah. Morgan, and then I switched in Ward Davis and then Josh Ward, and so that's just the playlist that I have that I play a lot. Oh yeah, because you used to have it as Luke Combs but until then they he got taken out until he died, or he's yeah. dead to me. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, the fact I don't know if we talked about it on this, but the, I know I texted you about it how he took the old version of "She Got the Best of Me" off of Spotify and only has the new version on there now, and it bums me out so much because the new version sucks so much. Such Where, a disappointment. Whereas the original is genuinely my favorite song by him, and oh, it's yeah. genuinely one of my favorite songs. But now it doesn't exist anymore, and it makes me really sad. And and the <laughs> way that they the do the shit on him that bugs me more than anything is the fact that his voice is so great and it's powerful. And why would you ever do anything to like cover that up with post-production and shit? It's like, yeah. let the dude sing. Cause his voice is tremendous. Why are you doing all this other shit? It makes absolutely no sense to me. Like who's out there listening to a raw version of his voice and being like, let's definitely pile a bunch of shit on top of that yeah. so that you can't hear how good he can sing. Like wh- yeah. who, who wants that? <laughs> We need to improve this voice. Like, yeah, who who, who yeah. is fucking thinking that? It's nonsense. Yeah, it's yeah. So yeah, jo- uh, Josh Ward is great. Um, <laughs> is this is the shorts? Is the that, sum, uh, that of what is we're the saying. gist? <laughs> um, so let's just hop into his top ten. Since I don't, he's one I ha- we haven't gotten to see yet. He's I don't think he tours outside of Texas. If I remember right. Yeah, I certainly haven't seen him come around here, because if he did, I would definitely be there. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Oh, one quick thing is we have... This is how... This has nothing to do with anyone else besides just us two and us being super happy about it, is that we are officially official now, because we have media passes to Medicine Stone. Yeah, that means we're Um, cool. I also don't know what it means, but I like the sound of it. I don't either, but I can say that we have that. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 we're we're here. We're official official business. Uh, yep, yep. You know. Yeah. Yep. So I'm super <laughs> excited, even more for Medicine Stone. Even though I've always been excited for Medicine Stone because oh, hell yeah. it's Medicine Stone. Um, if you just heard my dad sneeze in the background, that was that. Um, it's not just a ghost <laughs> trying to murder me. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, yeah. Love living with my parents as an adult. It's wonderful. Um. But yeah, anyway, Josh Ward, top 10, let's do it. Let's do it. So first off is the titular song from More Than I Deserve, (gasps) More Than I Deserve. And I wish right now she could see what goodbye's done to me. Cause I know I could change her mind, make her. But then again, I know it's too late 
If I could do it all over, I'd kiss her a little sweeter, held her a little closer. But the man that she needed, cause that girl was more, more than I deserved. Uh, this song is just like about winning the lottery and it's like, hey, look, I got more money than I thought I was going to. This is more than I need or more than I deserve. And I, that's, it. <laughs> that's exactly it. Uh, no, but this I is not uh, do my homework. This is a great <laughs> this is a good one. Uh, he has a lot of songs like this, a lot of, you know, heartbreak type situation songs. And so this is one where it's it's got a little bit more of an upbeat feel to it. But the. The lyrics talk about this guy who's reflecting on a, a like a a lost lover, you know, broken relationship where he's kind of realizing how great he had it and he, and he's like, you know, she was more than I ever deserved and yeah. and I, you know, I messed it up and I I should have done something and I, I I could try to get her back, but I know it's too late and so he's just kind of talking about how he really didn't realize what he had until now that it's gone. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, yeah, uh, th- this actually, when this album first came out, it was just produced a little more, I think, like, than his other albums were, and at first I thought it was going a little poppy, but then I listened to it some more, I'm like, no, these are all still real instruments, oh, but yeah. it just sounds more produced than the other ones, and so at my first listen through the album, I was just like, it's pretty good, but then the second listen through, I was like, "Never mind, this album's just fantastic." Yeah, it's it's. I think it's just got a, it's got a lot of players on it, so it's got a lot yeah. of different string instruments and things layered on. So it's yeah, it's it's not like they're yeah. they're fucking it, putting it definitely, bullshit it all definitely, over it. Yeah, it definitely pops up most in a in a song that we'll be getting to down the list, but which I'll bring up again. But for now, number nine is "Say Hello to Goodbye." Yeah. To introduce you to lonesome days and holy nights. I guess you'll have to get used to all those tears in your eyes. Say hello to goodbye. That seems very counterproductive. Uh, this is the type of song that I am a sucker for at all times, where he's just kind of he's talking about you know the the transition into being alone, and so he he's saying you know say hello to this, say hello to that. It's it's very similar to the I mean the the Tyler uh, Farr song "Hello Goodbye." I mean it's yeah. basically <laughs> similar words, uh, and yeah. so he's just kind of talking <laughs> about you know life changing to to be what it's going to be now that he's alone and so so you know he wraps yeah. it up with you know say hello to goodbye this is yeah. you know this it's is what this, your life is now it's not this new theme in country songs it's a very you know common theme it, exactly that, but, but and i think i think Josh Ward does a really good job with these as you'll yeah. notice a lot of the songs on this list are kind of like that uh but i think he yeah. does a really good job with these yeah this is the one song we had difference for the list of uh i had whiskey and whitley because i love that song says but. the guy who didn't put any keith whitley songs on his <laughs> saddest songs and has said publicly that you don't even listen to keith, keith whitley that much if it's at true. all it's true poser which, out, which will get which will come up again in a little bit poser. Um, <laughs> i know i'm not even a country fan because i don't listen to one artist <laughs> yeah. um <laughs> if that artist is going to be referenced in the song you were going to pick yeah, fair enough. I mean, to be completely honest, though, when I first heard it, I misheard the lyrics, and I thought it said whiskey and rascal flatsing. <laughs> I could see how you could mess that up. <laughs> it you sounds are, so You similar. are very stupid, yes. <laughs> Why, yes, your IQ is minimal. <laughs> Keen observation, stupid one. <laughs> Why, yes, you are the biggest dumbass on the face of the planet. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> enough about my intelligence. I have a college degree. Um, <laughs> number eight, what I'm doing. She's out on some dance floor, spinning in the neon lights. Her in her shoes and high rise, slipping on a dress that fits just right. Uh, 
This is one of those great ones of just kind of the post breakup. You're out and about, and you're like, you're wondering if she's wondering what I'm doing, type thing. Like, you're, yeah. you're wondering if you're on the mind of the ex. Yeah, because yeah. I, I like the I like the lines about that because it's he he without like directly stating it, he's saying that he's you know basically thinking about her. And it's like she's on his mind, but he's saying yeah. like, "Well, I wonder if she's thinking about what I'm doing. You know, is she thinking yeah. about what I'm like? Is she as hung up as I am? Is she thinking about what I'm doing?" Uh, without like totally going out there and saying, you know, she's always on my mind and I'm sad or whatever. He's just like, "Oh, I wonder if she thinks I'm doing this and that and whatever." And and it's really just a way of saying like, "Oh, you're you're not over her, and you're hoping that she's not over you either." Yeah. Yeah, it's just a fantastic song. Because that's always obviously been one that anyone who's been through any sort of breakup has ever thought. Just like, I wonder if they're still thinking about me or if they're yep. the ones who have moved on and I'm still kind of stuck in this. Yep. And, yeah, it's just a very relatable song. And, yeah, I love it. Um, number seven, Together. You're the rocks around my arms around My true north when I'm headed south a lighthouse in my darkest harbor When I think it couldn't get any harder You calm the seas when the waves get rough I'm sinking down, you lift me up You give me shelter in the stormy weather <laughs> no, finally a uh, finally a happy love song. Uh, I love the line in this, you know, where where he ends the chorus, where he's like, "Even when I'm holding you, you're holding me together." Uh, yeah. Just talking about how much she means to him and how important she is, just yeah. essentially to his like overall well being on top of just you know feeling loved. Um, and because he he says like you know she's the the rock. Uh, uh, you know, and then the solid ground and all, all those metaphors yeah. and things. Uh, but I think it's just a really beautiful song and it's got a really great tune to it. You know, I, yeah. I have unabashedly said that love is dead and love songs are stupid, but this <laughs> is a beautiful, beautiful song. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh... I don't hate love songs because when we did our love songs episode, I had like 400 songs to choose <laughs> yeah. from. You Kevin don't hate love songs because you're not a broken <laughs> human who's, who's given up on life. <laughs> I've, gi- I've given up on dating, just not life yet. Not yet. You'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> You'll, you're going to learn to date. Don't you worry. Thank God for but, football. <laughs> I love football. Fuba. But for real, um, seeing the dudes on the sideline doing the pregame talking is getting me all sorts of jazzed up. Football's yeah. back. I was so close to just pausing the podcast because they were talking about the Bear Packer game, and I was like, what are they saying? What are they I want to know if they're just sucking Roger's dick some more, if they're being like, hey, the Bears have a chance. Well, that's <laughs> honestly, okay, again, sorry for, the, sorry for the segues, but it's finally great, or it's great to finally have it where they talk about the Bears-Packers rivalry the greatest rivalry in sports. Don't even at me on that. Um, well, professional sports. Yes. Because collegiate, Bama, uh, whatever. On or... I would say Duke, North Carolina, but that's just me. Yeah. Um, but to hear them talk about the rivalry and not just be like, Rodgers is God and fuck the Bears. They can't even try to do anything to stop him. Rodgers is God. Now yeah, it's like. Which is what it's been. Now, for exactly. The last and now it's years. like. Shit, I don't know. They might get after him. And I'm like, damn yeah. right. I just <laughs> yeah, need exactly. that might. Just say might. That's all I need. Yeah. <laughs> Have some faith in the Bears. Exactly. Um, speaking of Bears, number six, change my mind. I always thought that nothing could. The Bears. 
Yeah. <laughs> There's a sports clips commercial on it. Chicks are hot. Yeah. Anyway, uh, um, I love this song. Uh, it, it's one of those songs that there's a lot of country type cliche songs about like going out to a bar and saying, and then the chorus is just the line that he says to the girl to try to take her home. And this is yeah. one of those, but I think it's a really nice tune because he's not he's not saying some sort of you know we're both lonely, so let's just plow and feel better. It's yeah. it's him talking about like you know I didn't come out here with any sort of expectations and finding someone that's going to change my life and I'm going to run away with forever. But you know, you could change my mind. And I think that's a really, a really nice line, a really cool, uh, cool love story type line where he's just like, you know, we didn't expect to meet, but now that we have, I'm fully open to wherever this goes. Yeah. It's like the, I don't dance by Lee Bryce type thing yep. where it's just like, this girl is kind of changing who I am, but it's not like it's, you're it's not like you're forcing me to do it. It's just something I want to do. And so it's, yeah, it's like, I want you to change my mind into liking this kind of stuff. Like it's not, yeah, it's not, you're forcing my hand. It's, I want you to do this. And yeah. Yeah. It's a good, 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 good job. Um, number five is the start of where I was making my top five was impossible because all these songs are so good. Um, yeah. But number five is Broken Heart. Yes, I'm the only one with a broken heart. I ain't found another sad soul so far. Everybody must be doing fine. Cause I'm in a rut, they're stuck in party. love this one because it's like a super upbeat and quick song but it's just about pretty much having a shitty night it, exactly and it because it's very similar to uh the songs about trucks by wade bowen where it's like yeah everyone here is all happy and having a great time and it's it just kind of like jaded like why is everyone so happy and then, so he's just like am i the only one with a broken heart everyone seems yeah. to be doing fine and, and you know having fun and he's like i just want to you know have a beer and, and think about my life and and for some reason everybody else like there's no one else here that that can relate to me and just kind yeah. of feeling out of place yeah but yeah but it's so upbeat that you like li not listening to the lyrics you wouldn't even really see that but exactly like reading the lyrics you could you would if you just read the lyrics never heard the song you would assume it's like some slow ballad but that is not at all the case yeah but, so I love it because it, it's so upbeat and so catchy, but it's the lyrics are also super deep, and it's I really, really like it. Um, speaking of drinks and things, uh, <laughs> number four is hard whiskey. I'm heading out the door to do all the wrong things right. There's only one thing that'll get me through this night. All I need is hard. A soft place to fall A jukebox full of George Jones songs Hey, I won't miss her at all All I need is hard whiskey In just a little time Hey, one more drink And I'll be doing the it's it's what it's 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 about whiskey that's not soft <laughs> yeah uh this is so that, like we said before this is the second song i had ever heard by him and for a while this and then uh another that we'll get to were were kind of the only ones that i had saved by him and i would listen to him a lot um but i i love this song it's it's kind of a just a classic deal where it's you know it Drink starts pain. well yeah and he starts off with you know he's got a goodbye letter saying that you know his his lady's leaving him and she's not coming back and so he's just like all right well i need some hard whiskey and uh you know i'm gonna listen to george jones and just try to 
drink my pain away, and yeah. I'll be doing fine once I do that. Just yeah. to like, you know, I just gotta, I just gotta go through this, and then I'll be fine. And uh, it's just a, it's a, it's, it's got that typical, you know, narrative structure that that a lot of country songs have. But I, I it's, yeah. a, it's a really good one. Yeah, it's not, it's yeah, it's definitely not an original thought, but it's just a really clever song and how it's written. And like, I love the lyrics of "I always said her leaving would never get to me, so I turned your whiskey to drown her memory." Like, it's mm-hmm. just this whole like absolutely it's the kind of uh that's what's working right now type feeling and like oh yeah that whole like it's not gonna bother me i just need this booze and go away like yeah <laughs> that kind of thing so yeah fantastic song um number three between an old memory and me and i'm not hurting anybody as far as i can see is a cover of some guy named uh, Keith Whitey. Uh, originally recorded is. by a guy who does not exist. <laughs> um, actually, the, I, the first time I ever heard the song was by Josh Ward. That's why I really love this version. Obviously, I'm not saying Keith Whitley was bad or anything. Like, yeah, no, I I, 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 I honestly agree. I mean, it's also probably because I listen to this version way more because it pops yeah. up in playlists more. But I do definitely listen to this version more, and I guess I would say that I like it more without any disrespect whatsoever to Keith Whitley. But I do, I do like this version more. Uh, this is like one of the few songs where he like really belts it out. Like, where at the end of the song, oh, yeah, he's where just, he, where like, he, belting where out he, the lyrics. Yeah, at the very end when he says, between an old memory and me, and, like, yeah. really holds it. Yeah. Yeah. It's And I just love that about it, because that, that part of the song just gives you chills because of how, like, passionately yeah. he sings those and, lyrics. And he, he really does have a great voice, and that's kind of the thing that I, yeah. I noticed the first couple times I listened to him, and that's what got me kind of hooked, was I was like, man, this guy's got a, a hell of a voice. Uh, but yeah, this song in particular, obviously it's a Keith Whitley cover, so I don't want to talk too much about the, the song writing part, but yeah. the it, it is a great song where it's, it's instead of, uh, you know, he's at a bar and someone like someone tries to talk to him and he's just like, no, I'm not, I'm not in the mood for that right now. It's yeah, just, I'm not, I'm not here I just, to make friends. Exactly. I just gotta, I, I just gotta sit here and, you know, drink and think about things. And so this, this is just between an old memory and me and I, it's a, it, it's you know it's obviously it is a cover of a song from back in the day, but it definitely has that vibe to it, and I think he does it justice with the way that he did it. Yeah, like there are so many there are so many artists who they do the cover ju- like justice, and then obviously there's somewhere it's just like why did you do that? But like yeah. this one, like Jason Casty covers, I think I'll just stay here and drink. Like that's a cool, yep. that's a good cover. Yeah, I think he does like, a really good. Jamie job. Johnson obviously covered Mental Revenge, but gave it a different vibe mm-hmm. and like. So I love when artists do justice to a cover rather than you hear it and you're just like, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because so. the, the best ones are the ones where you wouldn't even know it was a cover if you didn't, you know, if yeah. you didn't know. Well, yeah, like when, I, when we first heard Jamie Johnson, we didn't know Waylon that well at exactly. the time. And, and and that's, so we did not know it was a Waylon song. Exactly, and that's, and that's one where, uh, again, probably because I heard it first by Jamie Johnson, but... I like his version better, with absolutely no disrespect to Waylon. I just really like the way that he does that song. That's one of the, that's one of the few songs I have heard where it, the second one I heard was better. Of some girls getting carried away. <laughs> Did you see that? Was she crying too the, hard? Some girl in the front row. She must have passed out. Security is lifting over the fence to carry <laughs> her out. Um, <laughs> I swear that's the girl that I was talking about earlier. I swear to God, it was the exact same spot. Hysterical white girl can't handle it. Uh, I I don't get how people get that excited about things. Anyway, um, no, but Mental Revenge by Waylon, I liked it more because it he has like the sarcastic, upbeat like tone to it, whereas Jamie Johnson's is more of kind of cynical or angry. So I love that. I just kind of like the Waylon feeling better of it. But obviously, they they're both fantastic. See, but I like the cynical and angry version because I am cynical and angry. 
I've not noticed the. <laughs> 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 uh, um, anyway, uh, so yeah, great cover. It's one of those, yeah, legendary covers that it's almost better than the original. Not yeah. that it is, but it's because that's obviously object, uh, sub- objective, subjective, objective, subjective. I don't know words, objective grammar. Um, it's a number- very objective <laughs> thing. <laughs> Number two, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the devil don't scare me. Ever since the night she left me, ain't a damn thing that can't help me. I've tried praying, I've tried wishing, just living hell wishing she'd miss me. Though I ain't afraid to die, cause I lost the one thing I was living for. So this one, when I heard, when I was listening to his album, this one just blew me away the first time I heard it. Yeah, it's uh, just, exact same. It, it it's stood just out one of those. Yeah, it's just one of those where the lyrics are just, he's gone through this hell of a breakup, and he just talks about, like, growing up, I was always so afraid of the devil. They always told us that hell was so scary and all that, and he goes, but after this shit I've been through, it doesn't scare me anymore. Like, that was, en- that was enough to terrorize 50 people, so this doesn't... Yeah, no, it, it, it's it's such a great song. I I love the uh, I I love the lyrics. Uh, I love the the tunage around it. But yeah, the the idea of you know going through a breakup that's so difficult um, that it, he's just he's like literally he's he's numb to anything because he's like no yeah. I I've gone it's like through, I'm not even I'm not even afraid to die. Yeah, I, I like, I've just... gone through everything that I could possibly go through trying to get over this person. So nothing yeah. scares me because nothing's going to compare to that. And it's a uh, it's a really powerful bit of songwriting, and it's just, yeah, it's a tremendous song. It, it leapt out after my first listen, for sure. Yeah, this was the one that I was saying where the production at first, like, even though I love the lyrics, it brought, like it worried me at a, for the second because it has that drum beat, like the, the very beginning, the bass. The very beginning of the song, I'm like, huh? And then immediately afterwards, it's all good. Yeah, because it's still all, of course, we have a grandfather clock, if you can hear that on the... Michael, well, if you're going to have a landline, to, why not fucking go for it? Yeah, because my parents have to tell people that they're old. Um, the time changed. <laughs> another hour happened. You yeah. didn't think it would happen, but it did. Yeah. Anyway, um, but yeah, just the lyrics of this song were great. But yeah, the, at first the, the sound, it worried me, but then it just went into, it was all instruments. and there was Because I thought at first it sounded kind of computerized drums, but then you realize, no, it's real. It's just they're doing that kind of annoying drum kind of uh, bass drum beat at the start, and it's just like, uh. Yeah, and and, that, and the same with the, with the guitar line. Right off the bat, I'm like, oh, it kind of has that vibe where it would be a, Kind of a poppy song. Uh, yeah, a poppy, upbeat guitar lick that doesn't ever elaborate whatsoever, but it, it yeah. yeah, that not, none of those concerns are are present afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic song. Absolutely. Um, but then, yeah, our both agreed upon number one is Sent Me You. Well, I drank whiskey and I've smoked weed been hopelessly addicted to the pain surrounding me and I've been lonesome and I've been so I've done a hundred miles an hour to the bottom of my soul and I called out to Jesus as a stranger Ask for forgiveness They sent me an angel Yeah, and, and I, This song is just Yeah, and like I, I said This was the first one I heard by him And so it, it stood out Obviously the first time I heard it And so it was one of those songs I was just like, wow This, this dude's got a hell of a voice And just the songwriting is great uh, it's got all the you know 
you know, he's he's praying to Jesus for a savior. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, the, the whole time you can kind of, I mean, the, you can see that the title of the song is Sent Me You, but he doesn't actually say that till the very end. But throughout yeah. the whole thing, you kind of get this vibe of like where it's heading, uh, where he's just, you know, I just love the way he has all the different lines. You know, I called out to Jesus as a stranger, and then all the once it gets to the redemption for forgiveness, part, but he sent me an angel. Yeah, to like... to send me an angel, and then he sent me you, and so this person came and changed his life for the better, and he, he turned his life around, like in 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 totality. You would assume through yeah. the end, because there there are songs where the lyrics you hear, and you're like, oh, well, this is my favorite song because it's the first one I heard. Cause that's been the case for some songs we've done even on these lists. But this one, it's like, even though it was the first one we heard, it is genuinely, I think his best song. Like, yeah, no, it's I, I such agree. a great love song and it's, yeah. Cause it's so good. Yeah. It's just one of those, it's a, I, like I said, it's not a brand new story, but it's about a guy yeah, who lived his life like crap, but now he's living it really well because of the, the angel that was sent and then yeah at the end you find out the angel is his girlfriend or wife or yeah it, it's beautiful and like between an old memory and me he really belts it out throughout this song too and it's yeah. like man he's got the pipes yeah. he's got I, the goods yeah this song is amazing and yeah i had no doubt this was number one but the other like the other four in the top five i was like i could have swapped those up up and down the list and yeah I, this one was down. a this one was a difficult one he doesn't have a huge amount of songs to try to cut down but that like i said I, I really like his last two albums in their yeah. entirety and so going through them like yeah this one or that one eh. yeah i literally yeah i got down to like 12 and because I ended up deleting two off because they're just kind of upbeat, dumb songs that he has out. And I was like, I, that's why I had them saved. But so I got it down to 12, and I was like, I genuinely don't know. So I just had to delete two songs. <laughs> like, I was like, I just have so to I get just, rid of two. I just give up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that's our top 10, Josh Ward. Uh, if you have other songs you like by him, let us know. Or if you've never heard of Josh Ward until now, that's. I mean, it sucks that you haven't heard of him, but now you do. And <laughs> I'm sorry for your past, but excited for your future. Yeah, because there, there, we have gotten a couple messages throughout the, you know, time we've been doing this where it's like, I hadn't heard of this artist before. Now that's awesome. I like this person, and it's like, good. That's literally the reason. I mean, we said it a million times, but that's literally the reason we do this podcast is we want oh, to introduce yeah. people to music. Hundred percent. And, and it's so, my favorite thing to do when when people say that you know got them into whatever artist i'm like well fuck yeah he's great and mm -hmm. twofold one i'm happy that you're listening to good music and two i'm happy that this artist now has another fan like it's it's yeah, the, exactly. it's the best outcome ever yeah exactly um so that's it for josh ward uh last week there was only one ep of note that i heard come out uh, which is called, hold on, I don't have it pulled up. I'm stupid. Um, which is called Don't Blame It On Me by Kimberly Kelly. It's a fantastic, very traditional uh, country album. And I'm just going to, you know, white knight be like, because it's a female in country music and females are equal. And Well, if you, we don't, need... if you don't say yeah. that in a public setting, that means you don't it's believe true. it. It's true, yeah. I'm sexist if I don't have exactly. to tell you that I like it because she's a female. No, it's because she's fucking awesome, and the album's great. So <laughs> check out that EP. But did you tweet it? Then you're still sexist. I don't actually think I tweeted out the list. Oops. Well, that means you're sexist. Knew it. I'm a sexy. Mm. I am a sexy. Um, ST? Exactly. Uh, <laughs> um, anyway, uh, what else have you been listening to, watching, doing, thinking... Uh, I got been getting really into Western centuries, which made me realize Eastern, Eastern uh, millennials exactly. Well, which made me realize I bet they were totally one of those uh, albums that happened earlier this year that you told me to listen to, and then I didn't. And then when I did listen to them, I'm like, wow, these guys are really good. Their album was what Songs of the Deluge. Yeah, because I recognize I recognize the title because I I, I I started listening. Because one of their songs came up on a daily mix, but it was not that album. And so then when I went to them and started listening to everything, I was like, okay, Songs of the Deluge is an album title that I would not forget. This sounds like it was definitely told that I should listen to. And I didn't, but now I did. <laughs> yeah, they're fantastic. They're I very love old them. school yeah. sounding uh, band. Right yeah, up my really alley. Good. They're fucking great. Yeah. Um, I actually, it just popped up on my daily mix today and it's a song i know we've talked about on the podcast but the uh 
Blah. Mickey and the Motor Cars, uh, Once in a Lifetime Girl. I just love that song so much. And I've been oh, listening. yeah. And I've also been listening to the song um, All I See Is You by Shane, Shane Smith and the Saints. That song's been popping up on my daily mix a lot recently, Fuck, too. Yeah. And those are just two fantastic songs, which everyone should be listening to. Yeah. Um, we will we will do episodes on both of those bands eventually. Uh, eventually. <laughs> Someday. Um, we got we got we got the next few weeks planned already, so eventually. Um, the, we got a couple more reviews on iTunes. I'm just going to drop that now. Uh, mm. So thank you to everyone who's been rating us. Please rate us, even though there's one guy rated us three stars. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're mediocre, but come on, uh, <laughs> come on. But we're good at average. You want me to do that in this four thousand dollars suit? Come on! <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, uh, anyway, uh, you can find us at countryhodgepodge.com on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Country Hodgepodge, Spotify. You can find the playlist Hodgepodge Cast Picks, where every week I upload the songs we talk about on that week's podcast, so you can listen to them in full as long as they're on Spotify, because sometimes they're not. Um, you can find on a link through the website, or if you search the username Donkey Factory, one word. <laughs> Uh, you can find Kevin's Picks of the Week where every Monday he uploads 10 songs by 10 different artists you should be listening to, and they're usually pretty damn good. Um, yeah. And then every Friday we tweet out Friday's new music playlist where we just talk about the best country music that comes out that week. Sometimes, yeah, I don't know, sometimes we throw a rock album on there or something if it's really good and we think it's worth checking out. Yep. Uh, but it's usually country because country is the best. Um, you can buy one of our dumb shirts on a link through the site, or if you go to T-Poke, search Country Hodgepodge, you'll find it there. Got uh, Sam Hunt Sucks, Walker A. Blows, uh, Fuck Nashville. Got all those great, great shirts. Damn right. Um, you can find me on Instagram at chp underscore clifftron. Kevin on Twitter and Instagram at chp underscore church. Please, once again, rate and review the podcast. It's helping us get found. Oh, also, if you're still listening at this point, uh, Hodge Podcast, slowly but surely, it is coming on YouTube. The first episode of the classic Eric Church, Kevin Says Fuck 72 Times episode is you now on YouTube. You don't want to miss that. Spoiler and alert. You, I say so, fuck 72 times. <laughs> So if that's how you want to listen to the podcast, uh, you can go through <laughs> YouTube and listen to them there. I'm uploading them slowly. I haven't had too much time because iMovie, which is how I make them, takes for fucking ever to do. So uh, I don't even sh- know how that works because it's a shitty app. Um, it's a shit app. Yeah. So we're now on SoundCloud, Google Play somehow. I don't know how. Podcasts. Oh, yeah, I don't YouTube. know how to access that. So I'm yeah, just going to I'm just going to believe Play, you. So I just I, it said we were approved and we're on it. I've never found the podcast. I don't know how to cuz I don't use I don't have a Google using phone, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's it for this week. Next week we're going to be talking about Sam Hunt, so <laughs> said <laughs> that's it for this week so until next week i'm steve hodge as always joined by kevin hodge saying goodbye good night and good show go bears